I'm Joyce Kravick. I represent North Carolina Senate District 31 in the North Carolina Senate. We had to hit the ground running very quickly. Uh, we had COVID funds that had to be administered. We had to allocate all those funds. We had um, a, a big bill, Senate Bill 704, that we dealt with um, a lot of those things. North Carolina was way behind in vaccines early on. And we had called in our DHHS and asked them to um, let us know what we could do to help and how we needed to make certain that those vaccines were, um, were available and given. Uh, a lot of them were being wasted because they weren't getting into the arms of folks. Uh, to her credit, our secretary hit the ground running, uh, planned some huge events, and we were able to get those numbers up. And uh, so we were very proud of that, very proud that we were able to increase the uh, number of vaccines that we're getting out in a very short period of time. It was a difficult process, but um, we, we had a lot to do when we had to do it very quickly. And North Carolina is always up for the task. And we did, I think, get things done, get things rolling so that uh, we weren't nearly as affected as we could have been. My name is Tim Ormsby, and I have the privilege and honor of serving as the chair of the Washington State House Appropriations Committee, our budget committee. We came into this session knowing that we had to deal with the public health crisis and the economic results, and we had to do it in an equitable fashion. Our sole focus, beginning our session in the second Monday of January, was to drive out the resources that had recently become available from the federal government. Washington's share of those resources amounted to $2.2 billion. And through an early action uh, budget proposal, we were able to distribute that uh, within a few weeks of the beginning of the legislative session, come to agreement with our Senate partners and have the governor sign it to get that money to the places where it was needed. We knew we needed to restore the confidence of the people and we needed to have internal confidence in the legislature about knowing that we were making the best use of the resources that were available. As a result, we created a large non-appropriated account for the uh, Department of Health and their partners in the local health jurisdictions to access those resources with reports to the legislature to deal with hotspots an ever evolving dynamic of access to provide assurances to communities that this was the right thing to do to identify trusted messengers within the communities to deliver uh, that information. And fortunately, we had a robust outreach effort as a result of our census activities in 2020 uh, that was perfected uh, in a virtual environment. And the legislature took those, that structure and resources, relied on it, and got them out in a fashion that has resulted in a high percentage of vaccination rates in Washington state with a healthy reserve to deal with un the uncertain unknowns of variants and other issues that, uh, may raise, uh, that may raise themselves and need to be dealt with either before the next legislative session or immediately when we begin. I'm proud of the efforts and I'm proud of the staff that made this happen in an all virtual environment. Hi, I'm Pennsylvania State Representative Tim O'Neill. As COVID-19 vaccines begin to be distributed throughout the United States in late December and early January, Pennsylvania was not doing a good job of vaccinating its residents. We were ranked near the bottom of states in administration of the COVID vaccine. It became almost impossible to schedule a vaccine appointment for our most vulnerable residents who were eligible in the first phase. Amid this frustration, I drafted legislation that was quickly signed into law that to have the Pennsylvania National Guard to assist with the distribution and administration of the COVID-19 vaccinations throughout the Commonwealth. In addition, in late February, the, the governor agreed to, cre to create a COVID-19 vaccine joint task force with leaders from both the executive and legislative branches. And I was honored to be appointed to represent the House Republicans. By early March, we unveiled a special initiative to get teachers vaccinated so schools could reopen. Once education professionals were vaccinated, we directed counties to establish re regional vaccination clinics. Then we targeted frontline workers and first responders. 
Finally, on March 31st, we announced an accelerated vaccination timeline so that all Pennsylvania adults were eligible by April 19th. Pennsylvania is now a leader at getting shots in arms. As of today, 89.45% of distributed vaccines have been administered and 62.2% of Pennsylvania's population has been fully vaccinated. This ranks Pennsylvania near the top of all states in first amongst the largest states for, all, for total doses administered. I admit that in the beginning, I was very skeptical of the vaccine task force, but I think it shows how much can be accomplished when all parties come to the table, check our egos, and work together towards a common goal. Thank you.